Окей, okay, let's start. Хочу представить вам следующего докладчика. Это Том Брайан. Многие из вас его уже, наверное, знают. Его компания сделала игру No Time to Explain для Steam. Вчера он презентовал свой новый проект на Playgum, который называется Speedrunners. Давайте поприветствуем Тома. Hello. Uh, thanks for the introduction and thank you all for coming to my talk. Uh, so before we get started, uh, I'm just going to tell you all about my dad. My dad, uh, he works on a market stall and for the past 25 years or so, he's got up at 2 a.m., gone down to the market, uh, sold mushrooms and potatoes all night and then gone home at 11 o'clock, uh, gone to sleep, woke up, seen his kids for an hour and then gone back to bed. It's the kind of job where everything's the same every day and it's the kind of thing that drains life out of you. Uh, So that's a normal job, and that's what I think a lot of parents do if you're in this industry. And it's easy to think that working in games is just the most exciting thing in the world, and we all love it. But if you do the same thing every day, no matter what it is, even if it is this, then it's going to wear you down. So I'm not going to tell you in this talk how to be a master animator in the next 20 minutes, but uh, I think it's important to make sure that 20 years from now, uh, you still want to come into work every day, and you're still as excited about doing what you're doing as you were the first day you started. And that sounds like it's easy and it sounds like it's something that's going to happen automatically, but it's difficult and it's something that you have to make an effort for. So, to get started on slide number one, I'm Tom Bryan. I made a load of Flash games nobody's ever heard of, and then I made No Time to Explain on Steam. I'm currently working on speedrunners on Steam. I'm doing art and animation on that project. And we've got a new project that we'll be talking more about in 2013 at tinybuildgames.com. So that's me in a nutshell. And without further ado, I'd like to say... <laughs> welcome to DevGam, and welcome to Kiev. I hope you're all having a very peaceful and nice time in the capital of Ukraine. Uh, Hands up anyone who's been to DevGam before. It's the biggest one, there's over a thousand attendees, it's going really great. Uh, that was a trick question because this is the first DevGam, it used to be called FlashGam. Uh, they dropped Flash because obviously there's not as many people using Flash anymore and you don't, even need, need, you don't need me to tell you about that because you've probably already seen a dozen talks about where Flash was and what's happened and where it's gone. Uh, So the community that used to work on Flash games a couple of years ago on Flash Game License is now making HTML5 games and Unity games. They're selling games on the Android Store, the Google Play Store, they're on Steam Greenlight and Kickstarter and the OER or whatever. And I'm not here to tell you what the next big thing is going to be because I'm just a developer. So I'm here to just talk about how games get made. So let's talk about the kind of games we've been making so far. If you've been working in Flash games, you've probably been making a physics puzzle game or like you've been using a lot of vector assets. You might get all of your characters as separate objects on separate layers and animating them with kinematics in Acton Script, or you might be animating them with computer-assisted animation like motion tweens. And if you're working in Flash games, then your animation timeline probably looks something like this. It's because Flash is built to make this kind of stuff, and that's great for... Uh, it's great to let people... Uh, it's got a much lower bar of entry for people to get into this kind of work and uh, it's a lot more cost efficient than doing classical frame by frame animation it's a lot it's better for file size and it's perfect for if you're making a browser game in about 2008 but i'm not doing that anymore and a lot of people aren't doing that anymore so what i'd like to talk to you about today is classical frame by frame animation and i know that this it looks like the hardest thing in the world and It looks like it'll take you a billion years to learn. It looks like it'll take a billion dollars to get to work. And it looks impenetrable. But uh, I'm hopefully going to spend the next 20 minutes convincing you that it's not as impenetrable as it looks. And uh, you're really denying yourself a lot of positives if you don't go the extra mile on this kind of thing. So the first benefit of working in classical frame-by-frame -frame animation is that there's so much more creative expression. You get to come up with new ideas that are going to make a difference to the project, and you get to apply those. There's a lot more experimenting, there's taking risks. You get to come in and do different things at work every day, and you get to contribute so much more human life and character and personality to a project. 
creative expression is the fun of working in a creative medium like this. And if you don't, if you don't remember to indulge in that, and if you don't make an effort to make sure that there's a lot of creative expression in your work, then a few years from now you're going to realize that you're not having fun anymore. So creative expression is the freedom to try new things and do whatever you want in this kind of medium. And this is an extreme example of doing anything that you can think of in uh, classical frame-by-frame -frame animation, but there's a lot more smaller practical things that you can apply to everyday work. Like if you're animating frame-by-frame, -frame, you can swivel characters around on a pivot, and if you've been doing puppetry animation in Flash, where you get a batch of art from an artist, and you tween it around on a timeline, then you, you can't turn characters around. You can't make them do somersaults and bend them and squash them and stretch them into brand new poses. And just something as simple as blending between new facial expressions in every other frame it adds so much more character and life to a project, and you're not limited just to the pr models that you've been provided with anymore. And because you're making small decisions like this, and you're adding new character and new life, and you're making such a difference to the project, you'll be worth more to everything that you work on. Whether you're in a, de whether you're in a decision-making role or not, uh, you get to make all the small decisions, and uh, animation will always be your area. You'll get so much more credit because everything that's added to the project will be down to you and you'll feel more accomplished because you'll be doing much better work. All the character and personality in life in the game will be your job and it'll be things that people will come to you and ask you about. You'll also get to work on brand new techniques and all the things that you've been missing out on if you've just been doing puppetry animation in Flash. So this is, these are examples of smearing and doubling and all the high concept animation techniques that classically trained animators uh, used to get the final 5% of making animations, making motions look that much more interesting. So, uh, this is the kind of thing where you can emphasize the intended motion of, that you're going for, and this is what professional animation looks like. This is the kind of fun you'll be having if you pick up classical frame-by-frame -frame animation, and it's a lot better, it's a lot more fulfilling than just taking a lot of art and positioning it on a timeline every day. So there's, there's billions. I just picked this one because it freaks me out. And this is what cartoons look like if you go through them frame by frame and stop and look at everything. It's a lot more interesting to do and it looks a lot more interesting and it's a lot more fun. And if you apply all these things, it's not just, it's not just about having fun at work because you'll also, your work will come out looking a lot better. There's sometimes people say about anything that you can tell someone had fun making this and it's easy to throw that around as like a catchphrase that you don't have to think about but what it means is that they take a lot of risks and they do a lot of interesting things. It's got a lot of strange ideas and it does things that maybe not everyone would have come up with. And so that brings me on to my next point which is that if you start having fun with your work and being more interested in it and being more involved in learning new things and getting better, then you're going to grow as an artist and be so much better because of it. In classical frame-by-frame -frame animation, there's such more of an opportunity to do more interesting actions and, be, and have work that looks so much more fluid and has so much more of a bounce and punch and impact to it uh, that it's impossible to not get better at this if you start enjoying it. You've got such a good chance to make more flexible characters and make more natural animation and make effects that feel more a part of the world and are more unique and don't look like anything else. There's all these things that you could be doing that you simply cannot do if, you've been, if you keep doing the easy road and going for the puppetry animation that we've been doing in Flash. And I know that if you've not been doing, if you've not been utilizing creative expression in your job this whole time, and if you've not been having fun at work, then you've probably got the perspective that this kind of stuff I'm showing you is all from 20, 30 year experts, and that if you start doing this now, then you're just going to stay down here, and the, you can't do enough work if you worked every day from now to ever be as good as the kind of thing that are so inspiring in animation. And that's a really pessimistic way of looking at this, uh, but a more positive way of looking at it is to consider that you've got all this space to get better. The 5% of space is things that we've done now, and that's a chance for you, and the 5% chance is that it's room for you to get worse, but the whole 95% up is that it's all uncharted territory that you've never done before, and there's so much room to get better. If you start learning again, then there's all this 95% chance that you'll get better, and all of this space is just opportunities to do new things and try and come into work and do something different every day.
So the good news is that you don't even have to be uh, an expert draftman or an incredibly good artist to start getting good at this. Be because animation isn't the art of doing incredibly complex life, uh, of being an incredibly good artist. It's just the art of getting good motion and making things that feel natural and interesting in how they move. So a good way to get started is just to start drawing things as boxes and circles and squiggly lines. This is what I do when I'm animating. And if you just animate like this and then do final art over it, then if anything goes wrong when you're trying new things and trying things you haven't done before, you can just delete it because drawing things like this only takes a couple of minutes. So it's a low risk environment for you to try all these new things and to learn all the things that you haven't been doing so far. And if you can draw a stickman, then really that's all it takes to be a good animator. And so if you keep doing this, it's impossible to get better. And, if you, and the only thing to consider after that is to just get as much practice as possible. And maybe you can read a book every now and then, and you can learn a lot of theory. But if you just keep practicing, you'll find out that every day you'll be better when you leave the office than when you came in. And of course, and of course the other benefit is that you can just enjoy learning again. And because people, when they start and when they're in college, they enjoy doing what they're doing because it's so much fun to learn new things and to get better at it every day. And if you just keep practicing this that we haven't been doing so far, then you'll be enjoying what you're doing and you will be getting better. So try to permeate just little bits of frame by frame into everything you're doing. And even if it's a project where everything is puppetry animation or even if it's a project where everything's already figured out, just try to find good excuses and good examples to use, even if it's 10 frames or 20 frames, just create new effects that you haven't been done, doing before. And then if you keep doing that, if you keep finding just small spaces to shove everything in and just to find little tiny opportunities to do things that you haven't been doing so far, then it's impossible to not get better. And this mantra of enjoying what you do so that you become good at it without thinking and that you want to come into work every day. It also works with going to the gym. I used to hate exercising, but now I go to the gym every other day because it's so it, because I'm just having fun there and I don't even think about how much hard work it is, which means that you get the benefits of it for free because it doesn't feel like you're putting in the effort. And it works it works for learning everything. It's just this is just a philosophy that you need to pick up and it'll make your life so much easier. So how do I get started doing all of this? The first thing to remember is to obviously animate everything as construction lines first, just boxes and squares and circles. You don't have to be a good artist to draw boxes and squares and circles. And if you keep doing that, then it'll be a low risk environment for you to just try out all the new things that you've not done before. And if anything goes wrong, you can just throw the whole thing out and start again because you will have only spent a couple of minutes on it. The second point is to start watching cartoons. And because if you're not watching cartoons, then the only animations that you'll come up with are the animations that you've already seen. So once you know the hard work that goes into this kind of stuff, you'll watch cartoons and you'll want to pause them and go through them frame by frame and see all the new things that you might want to try on your own work. And it sounds really flowery to say that this is where you'll get inspiration from because inspiration is kind of a worn out word by now, but it's true. This is where if you watch cartoons, you'll get motivated to try new things that you haven't seen before. And you'll just want to get back to work and try all the new things that everyone else is doing. Oh, and if you're taking notes, uh, I want you to write down tinybuild.com slash animation. I've compiled the list of short animations just for this talk. That's all different unique types of animation and all. It's like student projects and small studios who are trying to show their work. And it's all brand new techniques and different rendering styles and different art styles and different motion styles that you'll watch this kind of stuff and you'll get inspired, you'll get motivated just to get back to work and try all the new things that they're trying. So my talk in a nutshell is just that if you dig deeper into what we're doing here and if you go for the classically trained route, then you'll have more fun at work because you'll be doing different things every day and there'll be so much more variety in what you're doing. Uh, you'll be better at what you do because you'll enjoy doing it and so you'll get a lot more practice just without thinking about the kind of effort that goes into it. And also because you'll be excited about learning new techniques again. Uh, you'll also... I didn't even mention this, you'll be friends with everyone in the office because everybody loves working with people who are positive and excited and invested in what they're doing. Uh, people at work are always looking for people who are interested in what you're, they're doing. You'll get all the best jobs from people and everyone will want to work with you. And the smile's infectious, so once you start being a lot more positive, then you'll make other people excited about what they're doing in work.
And then, of course, the other benefits are that you'll become more attractive, you'll win the lottery, you'll never get older, and you'll never die. So I'm Tom Bryan, and this has been Don't Be Bored, Don't Be Boring. And that's my talk. Oh, it's work. Вопросы? Поднимайте руки, ребята. Кто хочет что-то спросить? Окей, давайте тогда. Есть такие вопросы? Hello, thanks for the speech. I would like to ask about frame rate issues. So, obviously, the more frame rate is it, the harder it gets to get the animation drawn correctly. Or what are your tips about it? What's your target FPS? Or do you hire other people to draw all the frames in between, or use some special software for this kind of stuff? Yeah. So the question is about using different frame rates, and that it's. That the higher frame rate you go, then the more frames you have to draw because you have to draw so many frames per second in animation. Um, well, TV animation is anim it moves at I think 24 frames per second, and so what they usually do in TV animation is that a lot of animation isn't one fr isn't 24 unique individual frames a second. A lot of times it's just 12, and sometimes it's even six. In a lot of anime, they're animating at like six or eight frames per second. Um, and all of that looks great to me. If you learn the uh, if you learn the principles of what makes good animation, then you'll be able to animate something good at like six or eight frames per second. And you can for specific scenes, you can go to 24 frames and do as much work as possible. But for a lot of the time, I'm I'm usually not, even though the frame rate's set to because it's games, it's set to 30 or 60 frames per second. I'm definitely not drawing unique frames for all of those. Um, and so it's not something that you need to be scared of. Okay, thanks. I have another question about uh, pixel art because a lot of developers are choosing pixel art instead of smooth animations. Mm -hmm. Do you have any tips regarding this technique specifically? So the reason the reason I'm so interested in um, classical frame by frame animation is because that's the that's the root of where everything comes from. If you learn if you learn how to do that, if you get good at that, this is the kind of thing where if you go to an animation course at college or university, this is what they'll teach you. It's because uh, once you've learned that, then you can apply the methods that you've learned there to any kind of art style or any kind of animation you're doing. Whether, whether it's pixel art or whether it's 3D or even the stuff that we've been doing in Flash. If you learn frame by frame classical animation first, then you'll have all the tools you need to adapt to any kind of uh, different medium or animation style or art style because uh, once you're good at that then all of the rules that you've learned will apply across everything and you can still use them. Thank you. Is there any other questions? There are. Guys, please let me ask you. Can you ask me another question? Hello. Why are you choosing uh, the flash uh, animation uh, uh, and uh, using uh, uh, using you any other packages like Toon Boom, Anime Studio, and other uh, animation tools? Uh, so uh, I've been making flash games for the past few years, and <laughs> the only different type of games I started working on after that were in Unity. And so I, I've heard that Toon Boom is really good. A lot of people say it's a little bit better than Flash, but um, I, I think like the the real point of uh, getting into classical frame by frame animation is that it's just drawing frames over and over again. So you could make good animations in MS Paint if you really wanted to. Uh, I've never used Toon Boom. I've heard it's really good. Um, that's all, all I know that people are really using in a professional industry, uh, Flash and Toon Boom, I don't know what else there is. But um, I've, I've got, apart from like 3ds Max or Maya. Um, but really, it, you, you don't have to worry so much about what kind of software package you're using as long as you learn the techniques, as long, like, as long as you can animate. If you can animate on paper, then you can animate in any kind of software anyone's ever going to come out with. OK, thank you. Is there some other questions? 
now. So thank you very much for your presentation.